history of cognitive psychology philosophical views to understand the general nature of many aspects of the world, in part through introspection, the examination of inner ideas and experiences. Physiology seeks a scientific study of life-sustaining functions in living matter, primarily through empirical, observation-based methods. Two Greek philosophers, Plato, C.A. 428 to 348 BC and his student Aristotle 384 to 322 BC wrote extensively on the nature of memory and other mental processes empiricism aristotle biologist naturalist and greek philosopher all knowledge comes from experience the only route to truth is reason contemplation and empiricist believes that we acquire knowledge via empirical evidence that is we obtain evidence through experience and observation to explore how the human mind works, empiricists would design experiments and conduct studies in which they could observe the behavior and processes of interest to them. Empiricist view of the world as an antithesis. Rationalism. Plato. Rationalist and Greek philosopher. Children come into the world with a great deal of innate knowledge. The only route to truth is meticulous observation. A rationalist believes that the route to knowledge is through thinking and logical analysis does not need any experiments to develop new knowledge. A rationalist who is interested in cognitive processes would appeal to reason as a source of knowledge or justification. Rationalist view of the world as a thesis. Empiricists believe people are the way they are, and have the capabilities they have, largely because of previous learning. Empiricists accordingly believe the environment plays a powerful role in determining one's intellectual, and other, abilities. His emphasis on empirical evidence and many of the topics he studied are consistent with 21st century cognitive psychology. In fact, Leahy, 2003, suggests that Aristotle could reasonably be called the first cognitive psychologist. However, psychology as a discipline did not emerge until the late 1800s. Nativists often suggest that some cognitive functions come built in, as part of our legacy as human beings. Hardwired. Functions such as short term memory for example, are attributed to innate structures of the human mind that are present in at least rudimentary form at birth and are not learned, formed, or created as a result of experience. The debate intensified in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries, with such British philosophers as Berkeley, Locke, Hume, and Mill arguing for the empiricist view and such continental philosophers as Descartes and Kant propounding the nativist view. Rationalism and empiricism became prominent with the French rationalist René Descartes, 1596-1650, and the British empiricist John Locke, 1632-1704. Descartes viewed the introspective, reflective method as being superior to empirical methods for finding truth. The famous expression, cogito, ergo sum, I think, therefore I am, stems from Descartes. He maintained that the only proof of his existence is that he was thinking and doubting. Descartes felt that one could not rely on one's senses because those very senses have often proven to be deceptive. Think of optical illusions, for example. Locke, in contrast, had more enthusiasm for empirical observation. Locke believed that humans are born without knowledge and therefore must seek knowledge through empirical observation. Locke's term for this view was tabula rasa, meaning, blank slate, in Latin. The idea is that life and experience, right, knowledge on us. For Locke, then, the study of learning was the key to understanding the human mind. He believed that there are no innate ideas. In the 18th century, German philosopher Immanuel Kant, 1724-1804, dialectically synthesized the views of Descartes and Locke, arguing that both rationalism and empiricism have their place. Both must work together in the quest for truth. Most psychologists today accept Kant's synthesis.